Good morning, everybody. This is Eric with Shadow Ops RC. So, we went to fly this today, and we had some issues. So, we'll go into that. But I also wanted to show you my new toy that goes with this. I got these new binocular Ishin goggles. They're great um, beginner better quality pair of non-box goggles um, with the DVR recorder. I got them off of a guy back east that used them once or twice and didn't want them anymore. So they're basically brand new. But uh, the picture's way better and the DVR picture quality is way better. So there'll be more of a review on these uh, at some point in the future. So... <sighs> While I was flying this today, it was windy, I thumped into a couple of things, hit the ground, and while in flight, I had a motor stop working. Is it that one? You might not be able to see it. But there's a plastic dust shield on the bottom that somehow contacted the motor. Either directly like, or the motor overheated and sh from shorting out. So we've got to take that motor off. There is a replacement one. Um, I already had the VTX part off. And the antenna off so we don't have to worry about that um, you'll need a one point uh, one millimeter sorry 1.5 for every screw on here including the ones on the motors um, also you need some sort of a nut driver whatever will work but the size for getting the prop nut off is this sorry the lighting's bad you guys only well, you saw it. uh eight millimeter um so let's go ahead and start working on this um the motors like to spin with the nut if you have them on right because they're a nylock nut so it's best to just go underneath hold the motor while you take the nut off um, these motors only attach the frame on the bottom so once I get this prop off I'm just gonna finger tighten the nut back on so I don't lose it um, so I'm going to show you one or two screws off I had to replace that one, that's why it's a different color. Um, but they're pretty easy to come off. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get all the screws loose off camera, and then I'll be back. Okay, everybody, we got all the screws out, as you can see. Four bolts, the antenna holder on. Um, but then this top plate is ready to come off. So just feed your battery plug through it okay and then I'm going to set this aside um something cool about these Ishin Sivatars is the bumper setup so the foam is individual to one side so we just need to remove and we didn't even have to remove the foam it's just it'll be easier to work on it because each of these ducts is individual so I could have left it on and it just give me more space to work on it so we got that off set aside and so there's where your flight stack is uh, this is just a heat sink I added because this drone gets really really hot I've done some stuff to fix that but it still gets really warm this is our FR Sky back here, RSXR receiver. Has a great signal strength. And then these are just antenna tubes that it came out with. Came with, sorry. And you can see it's got blue anodized aluminum, aluminum standoffs. Um, 
Just doing a quick inspection here while we're here. Um, I don't see anything damaged other than the motor that stopped spinning in flight. Luckily, I was high enough up and near something that wasn't wet since we have snow on the ground and it landed on a dry surface on my roof or we could have more problems. So, um, there's just four bolts on the back. Um, gonna get those off and we'll be back. Okay, so we got the bolts off, you guys, that hold it on while they're loose. And then we gotta cut this tape. So we'll cut this tape and we also gotta cut the wires. Um, the pads are really teeny on the ESC. So it's just easier to splice the new motor in, which is what I'm gonna do. Hey everybody, so we got the tape off. If you get to see the motor dangling now. So we'll splice, we'll cut that and splice it here in a minute. Uh, mine's a 6S version, and I would recommend that uh, you have a couple of these new motors. So I've had bearings go on one. So what I might do is take the bearing from this motor, because they're still good. As you can see, it still spins good. And I might have a good motor here. And then, because the bearings went in that one, when this was still under warranty, they sent me a new motor. Now these come with a new prop knot, for some odd reason. Um, I used the new one, I don't remember why. Oh, I remember, because I've replaced another engine, so I have spare prop nuts, that's why. So it comes with new motor screws. Um, and a new prop nut. So, and it goes right there. So what I'm going to do is get another set of tools that we need, and I'll show you what I do. Okay, so you want a good either pair of wire pliers, which I have, but because of my good old PTSD brain, I can't remember I set them. But I have these that I got with some soldering equipment. Sorry for the dog hair on those. And they're just snips. So what I do is I just go about that long and snip them. And you may have to do one at a time. Um, these wires are pretty easy to strip by finger, uh, but you can still use some wire strippers if you want. So I'll show you that. So if you just use your fingernail and pinch, see how easy that was to strip. Um, and then, so we'll need to tend these before we hook them back in. And then also, I trace the wires, sorry about that, from the old motor. So let's take a look at this. So, it's kind of hard to see, but you got to just, when you splice, got to make sure you splice the right ones. So, we're going to go ahead and cut these off. Okay, so we have them snipped. We have them de-sheathed. And then off camera, I'll splice the new motor in. Um... It's good to use some sort of electrical tape or um, heat shrink once you have them wired in. Uh, but what I like to do is I'll just put the heat shrink on and move it away from the solder joint and test that I have it wired right first before I sink the, uh, shrink the heat shrink down. 
So um, uh, we'll come back in a little while with the new motor shot or not.